Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Car Stereo Chick. My name is Annie and I'm super thrilled today to talk to you about a new radio that just arrived, the Alpine ILX 407. I've had these on order since January 2021 and they just came in. This is the first week in August 2021. So this radio actually arrived as a bundle. Uh, it's part of an Alpine restyle kit made specifically for the 2011 to 2018 Wrangler JKs. It's part of the I-407 WRA JK. Now this kit comes with everything that you need for the installation, including your mounting kit, your wiring harness, your antenna adapter, your Maestro module. It even comes with a SAT-1 antenna adapter, although it doesn't come with the SX-T300 tuner. That's easy enough to add if you like that kind of compression rate, plus super detailed step-by-step -step instructions, which makes it ideal for do-it-yourselfers. The only other part that I would recommend adding is the pack USB DMA3. This is gonna allow you to flush mount the USB right inside the center console next to the OEM USB. Although there are third-party adapters out there designed to retain the stock USB with an aftermarket radio, I don't recommend them. That's because the factory USB is 2.0. It's slow speed. It's not gonna work with Android Auto and it's gonna be a little finicky with Apple CarPlay. So come join me while I get this radio unboxed, wired up, and we'll see what it's all about. All right, guys, let's check this baby out. This has been long awaited. I have been waiting for this radio, I think since January. And I did put on the Wrangler JK mounting tabs, mounting kit. So uh, this is the install kit that this I-407 WRA comes with, which is a lot nicer than the um, basic Metra or best kits dash kit. And uh, it does come with a three-year warranty when you purchase it as that bundle with all the Wrangler goodies. Otherwise, if you just purchase the ILX 407, that just comes with a standard one-year warranty. And I just wanna tell you all about this radio. So it's a totally different operating system compared to the 650. It's kind of built on the same platform and it appears to be built um, in the same facility. So this one is also made in Korea. The backside look, really looks exactly like the ILX W650 with a few extra features such as the Maestro compatibility. So that's one of the really big differences between the 650 and the 407. So this model is Maestro compatible. So if you do have one of these newer vehicles where you're gonna need a Maestro to retain certain vehicle features, then you are going to want to get this guy because it's iDataLink compatible and will retain certain functions like perk assist, which you might need. Now, other than that, this operating system is totally different. It's kind of based on what you see in the Halo models where you can drag and drop different sources on your home screen, which I kind of already did, but it's pretty easy to rearrange. You just press and hold, and then I could say, okay, I want to take you know, this icon over here and I can drag it over, but I'm not gonna do that right now but you can drag and drop nice and easy. And one of the cool things that they added, uh, I know it's a minor thing, but if you like to change the background art wallpaper theme, you have a couple different colors. On the 650, you couldn't change it. it had that kind of creepy blue eye iris looking thing. Uh, so now you have these kind of different colors, at least different splash screen, not as creepy, or you could upload your own image. But most of the time, if you're gonna be on your CarPlay source or your Android Auto source, that's gonna be the same with regardless what stereo you go with. So obviously this has 
Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It is a wired connection for those features. In addition to your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you do have HD radio for your FM and AM, which I guess I left that on the homepage. Oh yeah, it's right there. So one thing I, I will point out that I like that Alpine does is these preset buttons. They don't move, that's nice. I, that's one thing that some other brands do where they have this kind of scrolling preset functionality. These presets don't move, which make it easier for you to look and while you're driving and see what you're actually pressing. And um, they give you, you know, pretty much the standard stuff, a couple of different bands for your FM and AM, nothing too crazy. The main thing I wanna talk about though is the sound quality. I, you know, I haven't had a chance to listen to this, but if this is built exactly like the 650, which it looks like it is, looks like it's from the same exact, you know, facility, the, the manufacturer, then it's gonna sound great because the 650 sound great. However, you have less control. So the 650 had a nine band parametric EQ. The 407 has a five band graphic EQ, which some may like more, right? For the people that are not um, super savvy with this, less is more. Okay, maybe you can work with a five band EQ, makes more sense to you, less to fuss around with. Uh, for me personally, I like having those, you know, more bands, the better, the more control, but you do have a five band graphic EQ. You also have just kind of like an easy bass treble, balance fader adjustment. That's always nice for clients that just want simple. So that's one thing I love about Alpine is they give you kind of the advanced and you give it a simple. You're gonna have your full time correction options. So you could go in here and, and really set this up properly so you can delay the closest speakers so they hit you at exactly the same time. And then you also have built-in crossovers, which I really like to have. If you're building a system in stages, right? You wanna do the head unit first, do your amp and sub, upgrade the speakers, but maybe power them off the radio, save up for that power pack amp, which can bolt right onto the back of this radio. Uh, you can go into your crossover menu and tell it, you know, 80 hertz and up and adjust that slope right there and cut 80 hertz and down, I should say, from your interior speakers. So built-in crossover, great feature to have. Um, other than that, the one thing I wanna talk about really is like that HDMI input. Some people tell me, oh, they wanna, they wanna mirror their phone. They get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto mixed up with phone mirroring. Now, if you wanna mirror an iPhone, you really need an HDMI input. So I do have an HDMI input. In addition to that, you need an Apple AV adapter, which looks like this. So it's gonna go from HDMI, see that little HDMI, to lightning. So that's how you're gonna mirror your iPhone. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect from CarPlay and I'm gonna get, plug this iPhone in here. I'm also gonna plug this charging cable in here because this phone is almost dead. And I'm gonna just open up something on YouTube real quick. Let's throw something on. And I'm select my HDMI input. There we go. So now I have my iPhone playing, mirroring through my HDMI input. Now there's certain apps that won't display through this, that just has to do with the limitation of the app developer. I believe it has to do with copyright issues, um, but you know, things like YouTube, Netflix, movies that you own on your phone, that will work through the HDMI when you have that parking brake engaged. Now you always have this little shortcut too to activate Siri. That's one thing I like if you have a vehicle that doesn't have steering wheel controls. Um, plus you could always turn on Hey Siri or Google Voice and activate that. But for some people, it's nice to just press that button and hold it. It is completely touchscreen. So these buttons down here, they're not actual hard buttons. This is a completely glass screen, very sleek. There's no actual hard buttons anywhere on here. And look how shallow that baby is. That's why you can do that power pack amplifier with this and just bolt it right onto the back. And that makes it like a full doubleton radio. You could either do the KTA450, which will give you 50 watts by four RMS, or they also have a mono amp, the KTA200M, and that'll give you 200 watt mono for your subwoofer. So I think this is a really cool head unit. I think this is gonna be a big hit. They are hard to get. In fact, I haven't actually gotten my real 650s yet. I've just gotten the bundle the for the JKs at the moment, but hopefully the 
standard ILX 407s will start shipping relatively soon. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, um, and that's it. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next week. If you enjoyed this video, please help me grow my channel by pressing that like and subscribe button. If you're interested in this type of upgrade for your vehicle, please be sure to check out our shop, Sounds Incredible Mobile, or visit my blog, carstereochick.com. Links for both are in the description below. Thanks for watching. Now this kit comes with everything you need for the installation, including your mounting harness. Blah! Okay. This bundle is made specifically for 2000. Oh, blah, blah. Cut. <laughs> so come join me while I get this radio unboxed, wired up, and we see what it's all about. Perfect. Thanks. <laughs>